This is problem 2.4. We have three forces and we want to find the resultant force. So the resultant force as a vector is equals to each of these vectors adding them together, right? So we have to find first I will use the method of components for this problem. So we will find the components of each of the vectors, add them, and then we find the result. So we will have the component of F1 will be X1, and this one will be FY1. So let's write F1 as a vector will be 850, the x component will be the cosine of this angle. This angle is the same as this angle. As you see, the cosine of this angle, let's call it theta, is equals to 4 over 5. And it's a positive, so it will be 4 over 5, which is the cosine of theta. And the sine, the y component, as you see, is in the negative value of y, right, in the negative axis of y, and it will be the sine. The sine of this vector is the, same, this is the same as this one, so it will be 3 over 5. So it will be negative 850, 3 over 5. This is in i direction, don't forget that direction, and this is in the y direction. So we have two components. This is F1x and this is Fy1, right? This is the y component and this is in newtons. F2 will also be described in the Fy2 and Fx2. Let's find the x2, as you see, it's in the negative side of x-axis, so we already know that it's a negative value. And we'll, how much is this value over here? Will be the magnitude of the force times sine of 45, because it's the opposite. You remember that sine is always opposite over hypotenuse, so it's sine of 45, which is square root of 2 over 2, in the i direction. And y is in the positive axis, so it will be plus 70, 750 square root of 2 over 2, which is the cosine of 45 in g. This newton. And f3, which is this one right here, so as you see, we have the y component. Let me make it longer here. The y component will be f y3 is in the negative side of the axis and the x component is also in the negative side. So we will have the value is 625 and what is the component? In the x will be this angle over here is 30. So x will be the opposite of this triangle, right? which means it's the sine. So sine of, four, of 30 is one half in I. And then the adjacent of that triangle gives me the cosine, which is the value for Y. So it's, and it's a negative value. And this is also a negative value. 625. And that will be the cosine of 30. The cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2 in J. Newtons. So, and this is a vector. Very important that you have very clear the difference between a scalar and a vector. To find the components, we will add, so my resultant will be all the x values Right? And the x values will be the adding all these components. So that will be give me. If I multiply by 4 and divide by 5, that gives me 
680 and that gives me 530.3 and this is minus 312.5 that's in i and in y direction you get negative 510 530.3 minus 541.3 and that's in the j, j. this is a 3 Adding all those values, I have that this is negative 162.8 in I, minus 520.9 in J. That's the vector of the resultant force. As you see, it's a negative value in X, a negative value in Y. So that resultant force will be somewhere, let me draw in yellow, somewhere around here. Because it's negative in I and negative in J. So it's in the third quadrant. To find the magnitude, I have to square root this value plus this value and I have then that the scalar which is the magnitude look at this is a vector and this is a scalar and the magnitude gives me a value of 5 46.9 newtons. Now we have to find the, ma the direction. So the angle that we want to find is this one right here. It's getting a little bit crowded, my drawing. So this is the angle that we want to find. This is not as easy to find as this angle right here. Let me call this phi. Because this angle will be r y and this is r y x so i can find the direction i will find this angle first which is the inverse tangent of f r y over f r x which is the inverse tangent of my y is 520.9 over my x, which is 62.8. That gives me a value of 72.6 degrees. But as I said, this is this angle right here, right? This angle right here. And that, we have to give the answer in terms of the positive axis x. So what do we have to do? We have to add 180 in order to get the total angle. So my angle that I want to report is V plus 180 degrees, which then is equals to is 180 plus 72.6, which is 253. Because as I said, our answer, our resultant force is in the third quadrant. So this value over here does not give me an angle in the third quadrant. It gives me this angle right here, which is just the tangent of using the values in this triangle right here.